your head and uh, try to notice where your foot is. So most of the time, as we spend our days right now, like looking at our phones or our computers, so we tend to move forward. Try to align yourself, and um, uh, you even you may uh, put your uh, chin up so your head is aligned with your spine. Uh, in this position, you may uh, put your palms out, like you're keeping out and close your eyes and take a full deep breath in and breath up breathe out you want to take full breath in and breathe out continue breathing and focusing putting all your awareness on your breath that's how we are connecting with our mind, with our body. So we are grounding ourselves in our body, meaning that we are moving all our awareness, all our everything that's going on in our head. And uh, we are focusing on our breath, putting our awareness on breathing and grounding and trying to develop this balance of energy moving in and out and continue breathing in and exhaling out and think of your body as a, a device that has a lot of senses and sensation and while we are not noticing our body going through the week a lot we know that every time we feel triggered, we feel worrying, we feel stressed, we feel stressful, we feel, feel feared, we know that we can take a full breath, connect with our body and balance our energy. And that's how we right away can feel more calm and more stress released and more fun. Try to relax your shoulders and now while you're breathing, all your awareness. Like a co-host. With a problem. And if you are standing, try to feel how is it to to be standing on your feet. How is it your feet are touching the ground? Or if you are in a sitting position as well, notice your feet touching the ground. And you can imagine the roots growing from your feet, grounding yourself as a tree. So you are staying strong or sitting strong and your, the roots that are growing connecting you to the early to the top where they to the crown. And notice all your feeling like is it comfortable for you to be rooted? Is it comfortable for you to be crowned? Is it comfortable for you to put all your awareness in your body and distribute energy that the energy is not only in your head. And now we are We'll be doing screening, we'll be screening our body, moving our awareness from the bottom of our feet up towards our head. And we are moving from our feet to up to our legs, through our legs, noticing our any sensation, any feeling, trying to relax our body while we are staying strong. We want to relax our body, meaning that like a tree, the tree is always strong, but it's relaxed and it's flexible. You may want to relax your knees a bit, so your feet are strong, but knees are relaxed. And keep breathing. And you are moving your awareness up toward your hips trying to stretch your hips, 
to relax your hips if you have any tension notice what where the tension is coming from maybe you'll come up with some ideas why you feel more tension in your left side or right side what happened we keep moving our awareness up to our stomach area stomach area is very important for us in order to work with our energy work with our balance we came to this world from the stomach is where we were spending our nine months um, and stomach area is like our center we are feeling a lot in our stomach and the notion, uh, the notion of gut feeling is very important so you want to feel what you are feeling here keep breathing and try to relax your abdominal muscles and try to breathe very freely very in a relaxed manner and if you feel tightness allow yourself to relax this area and maybe you may associate some tightness in your stomach area with some some of your reactions when you're going through the day and if next time you will feel certain feelings you will notice that in order for you to experience something you tend to feel tight in your stomach and being aware of this, you can relax and allow your feelings to process more smoothly. We want to move up to our chest while breathing. Chest is the area that are most tensed. A lot of feelings are, it's an area where our heart is. A lot of feelings are connected to the chest and in our in today's world, we are so tense in our chest area. We feel a lot of tension. It's rarely getting attention and being relaxed. So while you're breathing, you want to relax your chest. You want to relax your shoulders. You can move them. And feel and maybe think of when you tend to bring more tension to your chest area in what when you are what feeling you are experience when you tend to bring more tension into your chest area we are moving up to our neck and we want to align our neck with the spine while continue breathing and we move up to our face with face, we express a lot of emotions. And sometimes we do not express the right emotions, they're not right, but the emotions that we are feeling at this time. So we may feel angry, but we still smile. We may feel triggered, but we still smile. It brings tension as well. So try to just relax your face and bring it to the neutral position. All your muscle is relaxed, your jaw muscle is relaxed. And sometimes when yogi, they are doing this face relaxation, the face can, uh, can be seen like ugly. You are not smiling, you are not expressing any um, emotions of your face, you're just relaxing it and it's sometimes you're relaxing your jaw and it's sometimes not. Uh, very like expression can be anything but it's good to bring your face muscle in a neutral relaxed position continue on your breathing and while you are breathing try to make your exhaling longer than your inhaling so you inhale and exhaling 
your exhalation is longer. You may inhale for four counts and exhale for six or eight counts. You are inhaling and nourishing your body and your exhalation is longer. Another deep breath in and longer exhalation. Two more, breathe in and exhale. One more, breathe in and exhale. While we were scanning our body from the bottom to the top. Now I want you to move all your energy from the top to the bottom and imagine that you are breaking all the barriers you are having and you are releasing all the tension and putting all your barriers that you have the way, like moving all your energy from up to the bottom. You can do it slowly scanning your body from the top to the bottom back and imagining how you are breaking all the barriers you have. You are now experiencing this process, the process of us doing stretching as a newly born person without any barriers and you allowing yourself to accept your experience, new information, and you are open to this experience. You can open your eyes and blink for a couple of seconds. And while you are keep breathing and continue relaxing your body, you want to move your neck to the right while moving your eyes to the left. Bring your neck back, move your neck to the left while moving your eyes to the right. Move your neck back. Now you're moving your neck again to the right while moving your eyes to the left. And back, move your neck to the left while moving your eyes to the right. Move your neck to the right. Moving your eyes to the left. Back. Move your neck to the right. While moving your eyes to the left. To the right. One more movement to the right. Back and to the right. Now move your chin to the chest, stretching your neck and eye to the sky. Chin to the neck, chin to the chest and eye to the sky. One more chin to the chest. Eye to the sky. And another one chin to the chest. And eye to the sky. Now you want to help you help your head stretch your neck a bit with your arms so you put while uh, we are going to be touching with our chin chest and helping a little bit with our arms do not push too hard but just help a little bit and while you are looking at the sky you're just helping to stretch your neck a bit more. 
chin to the chest. And five to the feet. And one more. Chin to the chest. And five to the feet. Now we're going to do a couple of ground movements into Move our neck in a full circle. One side, right side, and back to the left side. And one more to the left. We are doing everything very slowly. Now, we are moving to our shoulders and we are moving our shoulders back forward in the round movements like this five times and move backwards five times. Another five times forward. And five times back. And we are keep breathing, connecting with our body. Our breath is our grounding technique. So every time you are going back to your mind, back to your thoughts, put your awareness on your breathing and continue to be grounded in your body. And while you are grounding in your body, it's easy for you to experience what is going on in your body. And keeping yourself away from those constant thinking process. So we want to, now we want to uh, connect our palms and move them out like this and try to reach something that is, try to move your arms forward, stretch them forward. Rounding your back. And if, if it's allowable for you, try to round your back and chest even more, trying to reach something. Now move your arms up and try to reach the ceiling. Stretching your back and aligning your spine. And now put your hands to the back and push them up. While keeping your posture straight. Another one to the top in front of you to the top and back relax your arms your shoulders now we, we will open our chest with putting our arms on the hips and opening up our chest we are driving our shoulder blades like squeezing them and driving our elbows on toward the toward each other Now 
relax and go two more, two more times. And relax. This is very hard opening posture and it will bring a lot of satisfaction standing or sitting with your open heart and with your, with your stretching chest. Let's stretch our neck a bit more. So we were doing this exercise. We hold our left arm with our right arm behind us and we are pushing this arm like pulling this arm and moving our neck into the same direction stretching our neck more do we do it with another arm and two more times on each side Good. Left, right, and one more with left. And right. Great. So now we move, we're gonna move a bit our midsection so while you are standing strong on your feet just try to move your midsection and not your whole body so bringing some flow into our hips because they are not moving a lot for the day so we want to nourish our hips area our it's the area that we are relying on a lot when we are sitting move them move it into another direction so with every movement we are doing we are sending a flow of blood into this area and as we know the blood is nourishing everything so we are sending this nourishment another one into right and to the left okay great so now i want to uh, want to uh, introduce exercise that you can use during your day, if you find yourself um, lacking focus. So if you think that your uh, mind is like all over the place and you need to be focused on something and you, you cannot focus, like even if you think of certain things, something like distract your attention, what you can do is you can practice this exercise so you are uh, what uh, we you want to do it in a straight in a standing position uh your feet on the width of your shoulders first and you want to find something that you can look at like any uh dot on a wall any object but on the level of your eyes so i'm right now looking at the uh, phone to my camera so i will be concentrating on this on the camera uh, so what, what I want to do is that I want to move all my uh, weight into one leg and if you only can do this, do this. But if you can move your leg in the position like when you touch uh, like this or even up and you want to balance yourself and try to align your posture if it 
you want to, in this position, you want to, you may open your hips, and if it's allow, if it's allowable, and you have this ability, you can move your leg even up, if it's comfortable for you. If not, you can just put your leg, just put all your weight into one leg. And you concentrate on this object you chose, and you try to balance your position. And breathe for five to ten seconds as long as your as you are staying straight and you're able to concentrate on this object on the level of your eyes. When you do the while you finish with one leg. You can relax, move your weight to another leg and find this object again, breathe and concentrate. Focus on this dot object, anything you see on the level of your eyes. This exercise can help you bring your concentration back and it's also a very useful exercise for your kids. Um, of course, they may not be willing to do it like straight away and stay in this position, but like if you engage them step by step, maybe uh, first introducing it from the kind of game point of view and then just try, let them try and do this and then like um, build their ability to perform this exercise. But it's actually a great exercise for, uh, in order to bring your focus back for adults as well. So now uh, we are finishing our routine with uh, some tension and relaxation exercises. So, you want to put your legs uh, together, your feet together. And what we gonna do is that with the breath, we are gonna tense our legs, our kind of, we are breathing in, but uh, like ten, <laughs> bringing tension into our leg, into our stomach area putting up our shoulders so we bring tension in all our body like we're squeezing all our body very hard uh, while breathing continue breathing and we do it for five seconds and then we are relaxing so we want for our body to feel this relaxation and how we can feel something so we are feeling the relaxation in a contrast so we are giving our body full tension very hard like squeezing our body very hard and then fully relaxing so let's try doing this we are on a breath in we are dancing all our body and putting shoulders up holding it for five seconds and relax so after this, you even want to take the full breath in and you feel this relaxation. Let's do it for five times. On a breath in, we're squeezing our body, putting shoulders up, squeezing our legs, squeezing our stomach, our shoulders up and relax. With the exhalation and another full breath in. One more time, we are squeezing our body. Don't forget your legs, your stomach, your arms, your shoulders up and relax. And take the full breath in and breath out. On another breath in, you squeeze your body again. Your legs are tight, your stomach, your shoulders, your arms, everything 
intention and your legs. You want to take this full breath in and breath out. And final breath, final repetition of this exercise. On a breath in, you want to squeeze your body as hard as you can. And fully relax. And take this final breath in. Not a final. <laughs> in, out. Just another full breath in. In, out. Continue breathing. Don't do your final breath right now. So this, this was our routine for today. I hope you feel relaxed, continue breathing, and continue experiencing the process we are going through right now. So, and I want to, right now I want to talk, and I want to talk, continue talking about the principles of mindfulness that we are learning here. So last, uh, last session last program i started talking about principles that are very important in our mindfulness practice uh, why they're important because they help us to form our relationship with the present moment the moment we are experiencing being mindful and it's important because in the present moment and in our mindful practice we have an ability to notice to uh, acknowledge to accept our thoughts, our feelings, uh, our emotions. So uh, we need those principles to be able to form our relationship with those thoughts, with, with the practice. And as we were talking last uh, session, we may practice mindfulness on a different level and we can apply those principles on a different level of our practice um, the, those le those levels can be like we can process our feelings and thoughts thoughts and we can apply those principles while we are working with our thoughts thoughts feelings and um, emotions uh, we can work with these principles, applying them as a whole to the practice. Uh, and this practice can be meditation, stretching, relaxation. We can apply to those principles to um, we can apply those principles to our relationships because as we learned, it's very important to be mindful in the relationship in every relationship you have. Uh, starting from a relationship with yourself, relate the hardest relationship you can have sometimes <laughs> with your kids, with your partners, with your parents, with your family, with your friends, with your colleagues, with your clients. So it's very important to be mindful in all your relationships. And ideally, you want to apply those principles to your life as a whole. And um, don't be idealistic we are learning those principles and we are aware of them but it's it, it doesn't mean that everything so idealistic that you learn something and you apply it straight away and there is no like uh, faults there is no um, experience is experience so it's good to learn something but life uh, is teaching us as well and bringing us realizations and giving us uh, feedback of what we're learning so we, as last session we learned the first principle is being non-judgmental meaning that everything we are experiencing we are processing like, like being as a witness of our experience so everything we are going through we are not judging it we are not putting labels we are not saying or oh, it's bad or good we are just um, in, in uh, we are just um, impartial witness of our own experience, and every time we are noticing that we tend to put labels, we are kind of happy that we are noticing this, and we try to learn our own way of how we are judging everything. 
and at the same same time we are we, we are aware and we are acknowledging accepting the quality of our brain to be uh, very good at judging so our brain is very good at judging everything so we want things to be positive negative good or bad we like or dislike and it's how we are as our brain feels more comfortable our brain wants to have this separation so we want to be aware of this it's not uh, don't accept it's like oh i know this and i want to change my brain i want to like right now i will be doing everything differently it doesn't work like this uh, acceptance and acknowledgement is the very important step just to be aware of okay this is how my brain operates what how can i present process it next i hope you for the last week i hope you find yourself in some situation where you notice this quality of your brain and you were very happy because it's it's where you can exercise and practice what you learned and really uh, know how your brain is judging things. Uh, I'm helping myself with their information because it's very important and don't want to miss anything. So today I want to talk about another principle and I think that this principle is very important and it's very important to be aware of this principle in life, in our relationship, in especially in our uh, relationship to ourselves. And this great principle is patience. Uh, many people struggle with being patient. Uh, we want to, uh, we want to make things faster, quicker, and it's good. Uh, it's we are living in a very fast uh, pacing uh, time where we don't have time to uh, spend time on things that can be done very quickly. And our environment is teaching us to do so. We don't want to spend time writing a lot of things. We can copy past, we can access all the documents very fast. So we can connect with uh, everyone in a matter of seconds. Uh, there is no like uh, distance is something that we are not thinking of or oh, it's too far. We are able to move very fast. So not as fast as probably we want to, but still. So uh, this is very positive experience of ours. And we as people, we created all of this uh, based on the uh, natural process, right? Um, but it can give our mind an idea that we can fast forward everything in our life, right? So it can give our brain the idea that everything can be fast forward as we fast forwarded a lot of other process. But it doesn't work like, like this. Sometimes when you want to fast forward a lot of things, you can just damage everything and you can uh, things can be broken. I want to bring a met some metaphoric idea here. So imagine the butterfly and this beautiful creature. So in order for butterfly to be as beautiful, it's, the development comes for stages and we all know the, those stages. So butter butterfly appears uh, from the cocoon, right? And before, it's uh, not as beautiful as the final product. But do you think that you can crack the cocoon and try to take the butterfly from the cocoon at any stages? Or like, I want to get it faster. I want to see how beautiful this butterfly. No, it doesn't work like this. So everything has its own time and you are waiting for this development. So what the principle of patience is teaching us is that you want to take actions according to thoroughly developed plan. Uh, you want to exercise gentle force in your actions, gentle and consistent force. And uh, you want to exercise it in 
right areas and in right applied in right directions. Um, and if you do this, you would notice like remar remar remarkable, amazing changes in some time. Not right now, but in some time. Like it works with the butterfly, it works with other process. But uh, also the principle of patience teaches us that those changes, they accumulate uh, in time. So they are not happening in uh, one moment. They they are accumulating and it's from accumulation of those changes you see in some time you see this final product this final transformation at some point you'll see those results but they were accum they were accumulate uh, accumulating it's uh, uh, step by step uh, and um, skipping some stages and breaking through the process of uh, them being accumulated you can break everything you can destroy everything and um, here where you need to remind yourself that the principle of patience is very important uh, so and sometimes it's very understandable and we all go through this the results and those changes cannot be as visible and it can bring you uh, a lot of um, tension, it can bring you a lot of fear, stress. But if you do not see those results right now, but you are exercising the thoroughly developed plan, it doesn't mean that you do not have results. They, it means that they are not accumulated uh, yet. So it's the idea is it's not their time yet. So you maybe need to wait a little bit more. So do not rush things. There is no um, point to hurry, to rush things. Just give your plan, give yourself, give everything you do a bit more time. And here it's important to um, teach yourself how to be comfortable with this feeling of patience. So most of the time we want to rush things because we are not feeling um, uncomfortable. We are, we are not feeling very comfortable with this um, feeling of patience, experience of patience. So we want to teach, teach ourselves how to be comfortable with this feeling. And here mindfulness also helps us. So, and here the first principle of not judging is also helping us as well. So we are accepting, we are witnessing ourselves in this process and not judging and applying and, give, and we are giving everything its own time. And uh, the principle of patience also teaches us, and we know it, uh, like the people who, uh, like elderly people, you may ask them, so they have more wisdom than we are. Uh, so you may ask them and they will tell you that everything valuable in your life that you want to build takes time. Um, you cannot be build something valuable in a matter of seconds. Uh, everything we have right now, we build it uh, through time, putting our energy in and uh, expecting result, res those results came with time. So when you are not seeing a result, think that you, that you are building something very valuable, that that's why it takes time. It, you invest your resources, you are building valuable things and you need to be patient, you need to give this process um, a time. So um, principle of patience uh, can be considered as um, one of the wisdom manifestation. So, and you may ask your grandmother, grand, your grandparent, the people who are, uh, who have more experience and they will tell you, be patient. Um, try to be patient 
and uh, wait for uh, this moment where your results will come. While, important thing, while you are uh, exercising your thoroughly developed plan. Uh, just sitting and waiting, it doesn't work like this. You are build, you are accumulating those changes through exercising your plan and waiting for your results to come. Um, so being patient also means that you understand and accept the uh, idea that the circumstances, um, all the circumstances, they are unfolding, following their own time. So, so most of the time you cannot even do anything and you cannot rush, even if you think you are able to do this. Um, and for some people, it may sound like it's just waste of time. So being patient is just a waste of time. But you need to understand that being patient is meaning, it means that you are doing everything possible at this moment, at this exact moment. But you are not rushing things, you are not rushing the results. But you know that you are doing your best and you are doing great with what you can do, with what's available for you, and the results will come. This is the idea of passion. So just let go all this, uh, of this desire to get results quicker, but concentrate on doing everything, everything um, possible for you at this exact time. And when you feel bored or desperate with not seeing uh, a result, uh, just remind yourself and talk to yourself and tell yourself this powerful phrase, I think it's powerful, uh, that everything has its own time. And everything has its own time. So I think that uh, I want uh, I want uh, all my aspire students who are learning English and um, I am as a facilitator for one of the class. I sometimes hear, even though they are doing great and I see the, their progress, I sometimes hear that I don't think, I think that my uh, speaking ability is not improving at all. I don't know, I don't know what to do. And I know that they are doing, they are showing up for the class, they are doing their homework, they are practicing, and I see their um, English is improving. But they just, they just on this important stage there where their changes, those changes, they are um, building one on each other. And there will come a time where they see those changes accumulated, but they just don't see them right now. And you can apply it in all area of your life, be it a financial uh, prosperity, be it relationship with your partners, your kids. And also, I think it's very important. When I was uh, preparing for this program, um, everything I was like researching about this principle, I was thinking it's so applicable for our youth, for our um, M program participants. Our M program is Achieve More and Prosper. Um, and we are doing everything possible to help them to achieve more and prosper. And sometimes they can also have tendency to rush things. Oh, they may think like, oh, it's not enough, or you are not doing enough, or I'm not doing enough. And they are setting for themselves a long-term goals. So those long-term goals, they will achieve them by exercising thoroughly developed plan. And it's very important to have this plan. And it's very important to make sure that you're accountable, that you stay, that you stick with your plan and just focus on your plan while you are have those goals. But remind yourself that everything has its own time. 
and you will prosper you will ha you will have those results just give yourself give the process give the experience more time while doing everything possible um, at this moment and uh, what you can do uh, especially for people who are going through the coaching process like our M participants you can rush a bit the process by um, connecting with your coaches on a regular basis so uh, you can connect with your coaches like every day if you need this support if you need this accountability just call and mail them just get in touch with your coach and um, express all your concerns or all, all your feelings and they can help you to stick with your plan exercise your plan while changes will be accumulating and you'll get those results at some point so i think i find it um i'm also learning i'm finding this principle very useful and i know for myself when i remind myself that I'm checking with myself, like if I'm doing everything possible I can do, and if my answer is yes, and I remind myself that everything has its own time, those results, I see those results in some time, and it's working. So guys, for this week, try to notice where you tend to rush your process where you tend to hurry, where you are not noticing uh, changes accumulating, where you can stop, breathe in, breathe out, maybe use this exercise, the, concent the focusing exercise, and ask yourself, am I doing everything I can do right now? Am I trying to uh, push uh, the results to like come to me right now? And if you are checking with yourself and your answer is yes just uh, remind yourself that everything has its own time and your changes will come i'll promise you i experienced it myself so i hope you you found this speech <laughs> very helpful and i hope you take something from this and um, I hope you feel relaxed. I hope you feel at the same time focused and ready to go and um, experience this week, experience everything you have in your life and yourself. Thank you so much. Yeah, Paul, focus, focus. <laughs> That's true. And yeah, we need to remind ourselves about the focus I, okay i'm gonna read the comments i see the right 